pop into your head or like what did you guys do? I feel like um, I always want, I think when I came in, the sixth season was a tough season for them, so I think five seasons, the fifth season they were having some difficulties. They were launching other shows, people were all over the place and they couldn't concentrate on it very much. So I know that they wanted to turn that around, so they said for season six they wanted to get in writers who actually knew the show, you know, and loved the show, and wanted to participate, as opposed to the higher gun who's taking a job. Because uh, even when I found out, when, I learned a great deal, and I also have a great deal of respect for Rob and RJ once I created my own show, because the, the, the quickness of how fast you have to turn out these episodes, and how many places, like my mind would be, I'm prepping one episode, I'm shooting one episode, and I'm editing one episode all in the same day. So my mind is on like four different things, and I have to make sure that this makes sense because in five episodes down, I'm going to do this. You know, it's very complex, and there's no time. Like a movie, you're doing one movie, and you have to think of television. At any given time, you're doing three movies in the same day, and thinking ahead. So it's very complex. So they wanted people in there that they could trust to to, to honor the show, to give their own passion and voice to for season six. And I think that's how you got me and Missy Good and a lot of these folks who, like, I, it's a big joke I say all the time, but RJ said, cause, he goes, you, well, I already know you like Xena because you know how to spell it with an X. <laughs> you know, so, so many people spell it with a Z like Zorro. And I said, you know, so, you know, but I came in pretty, pretty passionate about an idea that uh, was about Xena understanding that her bad Cena phase was integral to her life because without it she would not be open to Gabrielle. You know, that, that, that journey led her to appreciate the beauty in, and, in Gabrielle and the match that that would be. So I, that was always my thrust and that overall is what that, the theme of the episode is in, in many ways. And, and then we talked about how to do that and I said, well, there's always the alternate worlds where what if the sliding, sliding doors theory of if you had done this and if you did that, so we worked on that. And then he came in and he wanted Joxer in it as a ghost. And I said, no, I don't want Joxer in it as a ghost. And I said, I want Alti in it as a badass villain. Can I have a badass villain over a ghost? Badass villain, ghost. And that's how Alti got in, because you needed somebody who could access both worlds, which meant ghost, shaman, you know, that kind of character, because they're the whole, somebody has to be the link. So that's how I got Claire in it. So then it just becomes a process. And then he said, you know, I trust you, you go, you go which is one of the biggest gifts he gave me, because they were so, because this is three episodes into the two-part finale, and he and RJ were like locked in a cabin writing that finale when I was down there in New Zealand doing whatever I wanted with, <laughs> you know, this is how it like, went. Like, like we were writing scenes on napkins and, Carl and Claire and Danielle and I were spending weekends, you know, goofing around. And, but God knows what came out of that. But. <laughs> I, okay. Would it have been still more subtext or main text? Um, you know, that is a, that question is based on, again, the rating. You know, ratings are everything, although we were pushing it. That's all I'm going to say. It was pushing. Push it real good. <laughs> Where do you go to write? And second part of that question is, when you're on set, do you do rewrites or um, writing on set? Yeah, I think it depends. I, I think the best answer for that is probably an army-wise example. Um, I personally write at home. I Some people can write. I, I have my own, I got a whole get-up that goes on there. You know, I have music playing, I have certain candles. I. I like to create a mood and an ambiance that helps me out. I really feel like I access something else. Because when I'm writing, and then I read it as a normal person, which I'm never normal, but as close as I can get to be normal, it doesn't, I don't know that I wrote that. It's a very weird thing. It definitely comes from a different place I'm accessing within myself and with. I mean, there's a lot of belief systems that you're accessing all the talent up there that is yet to be born or has been born and still up there, and that they're helping you. And sometimes it feels that way, that it's a funnel down to me. Um, but then when you get on the set, especially with Army Wise on the set quite, quite, quite a lot, and you're working with the actors, you realize sometimes that the things you write 
don't come out of their mouth very well. You know, and you have to rewrite it right there and make it easier, because especially with the actors I had, they were all fantastic, but they all had completely different styles and rhythms. And you would realize, okay, well, that's not working. And then you would then have to write, I would just have to ad hoc it right there. And you feel like you're in a zone. Yeah, and then you're, you're in a different zone. You're more in a work zone. It does, when you're in the editing zone, it's almost different than the writing zone, even though it's all a, a form of writing. It's now, like Stephen, can, wherever he is running around, this photograph camera thing hat. He, they, um, you yeah, know, yeah. yeah, when, you're, when you're on the set, it's complete, it is completely different because you, now you're just quickly going, okay, take out this word, this word, this word. And, all right, and what I have learned is the best thing sometimes is no dialogue, which a lot of people don't trust. But when you get there with your actors and you've written so much stuff for them, and you realize they got the point across with only two lines, a lot of it is the old redlining that's going on. Depending on the actor. Yeah, depending on the actor. Because a lot of times, yeah, they don't need as much stuff as you think. It's more for the person reading it. Sometimes at the studio, the executives, they want to know every little thing, and then the actor just, oh, you, oh, you didn't know that. So. All right. I have three minutes. schedule pretty tightly. We're going to do our best to do that all weekend, so please uh, do consult your pocket if you don't have them, and uh, please pick a copy of the registrations.